In Lesson 10-4, you're going to be comparing populations, and you'll be comparing two populations using the measures of center and variability, and you're going to also compare two populations when only one is symmetric. Remember the essential question for Chapter 10 is, how are statistics used to draw inferences about and compare populations? For Lesson 10-4, you have two vocabulary words. A box plot uses a number line to show the distribution of a set of data. It divides a set of data into four parts using the median and quartiles. A box is drawn around the quartile values and whiskers extend from each quartile to the minimum and maximum values that are not outliers. So coming down here to the example here, we have the middle, the median, drawn right here. And then a box is drawn around the quartile values, so quartile 1 and quartile 3. And then the whiskers extend to the maximum and the minimum. A double box plot consists of two box plots graphed on the same number line. So here's one number line and two different box plots plotted on that number line. And you can draw inferences about two populations in a double box plot by comparing their centers and variability. So right off the start here, we have new vocabulary, and it might seem overwhelming, but hang with me and work through the examples, and we'll be just fine. Notice on this example, the median is found for both the math class and the science class. That's pretty easy to find right here using the number line. 10 for the math class, 20 for the science class. And then the interquartile range is using these numbers right here, 5, and 20 for the math class, 20 minus 5 is 15, and then for the science class there's 15 and 25, 15 minus 25 is 10. Right here I want you to pay attention to how you can write an inference about the two populations. Overall the science student posted more blogs than the math students, okay, so we have 20 versus 10, that makes sense. And the median for the science class is twice the median for the math class. That's true. 20 is twice 10. There is a greater spread of data around the median for the math class than the science class. So right here, remember that inner quartile range, that 15 is larger than 10. So those are all statements that you can make about the two populations. On the top of page 455, example 2, you have the cost of mp3 players posted as a double box plot. Notice that I've already filled in the median for the electronics world and bargain basement. So one statement that you can write is the median price is 10 more dollars at electronics world. Something else I did is found the interquartile range taking 75 minus 65 to get 10 and taking 65 minus 55 to get 10. So another statement that I made is that the interquartile ranges are the same. Remember that another way to organize data is by using a line plot or a dot plot. And a dot plot uses dots to show the frequency of data values in a distribution. And down here at the bottom we have a double dot plot comparing the daily high temperatures in Springfield and Lake City. Those two dot plots can be translated to numbers, and we can find the mean of that data, and then we can also find the mean absolute deviation, and we're going to do that on the next problem. Before I do that, though, this is really important to remember. When you want to compare the centers and variations, uh, if both sets are symmetric, then use the mean and the mean absolute deviation. When neither set is symmetric or only one is symmetric, use the median and the interquartile range. Okay, so on this one right here, it's symmetric and it's symmetric, meaning we can draw a line down the center and it's similar on each side. Draw a line down the center, similar on each side. So that's why they use the mean and the mean absolute deviation. On the next problem, neither one of them is symmetric. So they were going to be using the inner quartile range instead and the median. So notice that I took the dots from Pedro and I put all of those dots and corresponded them to numbers. So each dot has a number on my list here. 
Once I wrote them out, I found the median by taking the two middle numbers, 35 and 36. I got 35.5. Then I found the first quartile median by taking these numbers and got 34. And the bottom, the third quartile, I got 36.5. And the interquartile range is 36.5 minus 34, which is 2.5. For Annika's scores, I wrote out each score one by one, and the middle, the median was 32. Then I took these values and found the median of 31, and these values and found the median of 35. 35 minus 31 is 4 for an interquartile range of 4. It says to write an inference that you can draw about the two populations. Some statements that we can make about this data, let me just read a few of them. The median of Pedro's data is 35.5, that's what we got right here, with an interquartile range of 2.5. The median for Annika's data is 32, and the interquartile range is 4. So another statement we can make is there is a greater spread of data around Annika's emails, but Pedro's data centers around a higher number of emails. So you normally would expect him to have more emails. Okay. Again, just analyzing the data after we calculate the median and interquartile range. And the reason we use the median and the interquartile range is because neither one of these dot plots is symmetric. Whereas in the previous example, both of them were symmetric, and that's why we use the mean and the mean absolute deviation. In example three, we have a double dot plot showing Kareem and Martin's race times for different three-mile races. Compare the centers and variations of the two populations. Which runner is most likely to run a faster race? So again, we have one of them which is symmetric. Kareem's is symmetric, and if one of them is symmetric, then we're going to use the median and interquartile range. It's pretty easy to tell without lining up the data that Kareem's median is 18, but on Martin's data, I went ahead and listed that out for you so you can see all of those numbers uh, written left to right, and then 17 is the median for Martin, and 18 is the median for Kareem. I found the interquartile range by taking this data right here and finding the median, and then this data right here finding the median. 19 minus 15 is 4. Same with Kareem. I found 17 for the first quartile and 19 for the third quartile. 19 minus 17 is 2. So compare the centers of variations. You can say Martin's data centers around the 17 with an inner quartile range of 4, whereas Kareem's data centers around 18 with an inner quartile range of 2. Even though Martin is quicker by a little bit, his data is more spread out than Kareem's is. Kareem is more consistent. Again, we are applying all of these different uh, ways to look at data and I know it can be confusing, but again, if you have your steps and you are writing out each step and carefully following those steps, you're going to be just fine. You will be able to use all these notes on your test, so don't worry about that. Just make sure to show your steps and really understand the process as you're working out these problems.